Okay, hey, this is Mark coming to you from Baker's Green Acres, and today uh, is going to be our very first biochar burn of the year. Um, let's see, where do I begin with biochar? If you don't know what it is, it's pretty much charcoal that's made in an oxygen-depleted environment. And, uh, you know, I talked a little bit the other day about compost and force multiplication, you know, force multipliers, stuff that you do that you get more than just uh, one fold um, advantage out of it. You get multiple advantages out of it. Uh, and compost, we can, we can supercharge compost with biochar. Biochar is charcoal that we crush up and I'm going to show you today because we're we're all loaded up. One of these days, I got to get smart about this and be able to show, you know, the loading real quick and then you know make it go fast. But I'm I'm not real good at that yet. Uh, but this is the retort, and this happens to be number four retort number four. It's an old one. Um, the new one we still haven't completed it. You know, we've just been busy with other stuff. But I am planning on completing it and that's the top for it right there this one is affectionately known as triceratops uh, and we've had this for quite a few years uh, when this inner tank is full of wood and these are hardwood cutoffs um, that we get get them by the truckload uh, this is completely full um, it's very heavy I would say it's probably 600 pounds and so we have to load it in there with the front end loader which is is tedious um, it's got an open bottom on it and then we have this outer barrel that's insulated underneath this is a refractory insulation all right you can see that all the way around so what we do to get it started is we light it off right about here with just a little kindling and then this starts to burn this kindling wood will start to burn all the way around and then it will work its way down into the barrel and the refractory pushes the heat into the inner barrel and the inner barrel full of wood it has no contact at all with flame so the wood that's in there actually roasts and the uh, the distillates they call them or the volatiles come out of the wood and go down the bottom and then come up and you can see this this holes on the bottom air holes and when this thing's really rocking I'll uh, I'll videotape it so you can see it it's it's cool at night really cool at night but we're gonna do it today because we need the char um, we needed to grind it into our feed for the chickens and stuff, but um, it really burns hard. And uh, so, anyway, this took us probably about an hour to get it loaded and ready to go. Keith is just up the house getting some paper to stuff in there to get it going. We can start it off with fuel, but we prefer to use stuff that we have, uh, so it doesn't cost us, you know, in fuel to get it going. Fuel smokes it. It'll smoke a little bit when it starts off, but when it starts to rock, it sounds like a jet engine going, and um, it burns very, very clean. At night, you can see the different color flames coming out of it, which indicates different gases that are coming off. Uh, we, on this one, we had a hole right up here. Actually, it's still hot because Keith just welded it up, but we had a hole there, and we would sometimes take a pipe out the side and when the volatiles start coming off we can uh, light them but we just need the char right now so um, we're just doing a, a run-of-the-mill standard burn uh, and we usually do you know several in the summer but um, this will give us about 200 pounds of char and then we will crush that up run it we have a little grinder that we run it through and then infuse it into our compost uh, and what it does is it it becomes inoculated with the 
uh, the biology that's in the compost. And the charcoal creates uh, little hotels for bacteria and protozoa to live in. And uh, it absorbs quite a bit of water, so it keeps them hydrated. Uh, when we do put compost out on the field, let's say you put it out on a really hot, sunny day, uh, you know, bacteria has a hard time. It needs to be someplace where it's cool and uh, relatively cool. It can't be freezing. It will just go dormant. It needs to be fairly cool and moist for it to thrive and, and multiply. And bacteria is the name of the game out here. It really is the name of the game. So this helps our compost and um, it has many other uses. I mean, we feed it right to the animals. You'll see once I have some made and I show it to you, I'll take it right over and throw it in with the pigs and it'll be crunch, crunch, crunch. They eat it all and then they poop out black and it's nicely uh, inoculated biochar that's going right on the vegetable field. So it's, it's a really good thing. Um, there's so much to know about biochar. I know very little. I know enough to, uh, to make it and then use it. I know it works, but I don't know all the new in nuances of it. If you want more information, of course, go to YouTube. There's guys that are total experts that know everything there is to know about it. <clears throat> but this is what I know. I know how to make it. I know how to use it. And that's what we do when we get outstanding results. So I'll get back at you when we get her, when we get her going. I think when she's burning real good, I'll come back on, just show it off. And then when it's done uh, this evening, we've got to let it cool off and we uh, yank the inner retort out and we're going through it. We're looking at the char. It's really interesting because the wood comes out basically the same shape it went in, just a little bit smaller and reduced. It's very, very light and it's actually, um, it's musical. When you hit it on something, it rings. It's really neat. Okay, get back to you. 